Now, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. We have the House Shot Heroes, mm -hmm. who are currently in second place in the New England North. Got it. They are an up-and-coming new team. Yes. So this team looks like it could be team, a new team of the year so far. I would make that argument because you get in second place. And based on how the standings are, unless they fumble royally down the stretch, they will almost certainly be making the playoffs. There is a huge gap between third and fourth place in New England North. Okay, how big how big a gap are we talking here? Uh, I think 40 plus points. I will get the standings momentarily. Indeed. They'll be going up against a team that is very familiar with the playoffs because mm -hmm. they've won this district two out of the past three years. Mm -hmm. Identity crisis. Yes, I see, and I see that we're going to have a very good match today, crisis! and then we're going to be featuring uh, Scratch Pair One. First game, we're going to be doing that. Why don't you give us a lineup at Shot Heroes? Indeed. P P1 is going to be doing that. I'm going to be chatting about Identity Crisis. But yes. talk to us about House Shot. Well, for House Shot Heroes, um, Bowler A, on lane 27. That's going to be Mark Gonzalez. And B Bowler will be TJ Souza. And C Bowler will be Derek Ham. Now, I'd like to point out, I spoke to Mark earlier. One of his pet peeves is that in a lot of tournaments, they will call him Gonzalez, and they will make believe the V in his last name does not exist. We are going to point this out now. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. For everybody else that in future broadcasts, that will be mentioning his name. It's Gonzalez, not Gonzalez. <laughs> so for Identity Crisis, leadoff will be Jonathan Hester. Second place, Chris Hansen, and your anchor, Zachary Thompson. And speaking of the aforementioned, Jonathan Hester will start us off right now. Here we go. First shot. Playing it down and in. That ball looks good. It is. Yes, and you know Gordon has to love that because he loves down and in when it comes to on the lanes. He's we were looking at this during practice. It, it looked like down and in was the way to play the shot. Mm -hmm. If you squeak, if you uh, squirted the ball outside, it was either going to be meeting the gutter monster or you left a big gap. That was during practice. Let's see if any guy can make the adjustment. Outside here is for a shot up. All 10 pins down. Very good shot right here for Mr. Gonzalez. Gonzalez. That's right. Don't say Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Yeah, definitely the back ends are being friendly to everybody. The back the back ends seem to be the ally of each bowler. Let's see if it's the ally here. Yeah, oh, I don't know. FedEx is messenger there, sends a the tempin down. Right. That's from Chris Hansen so far. Nothing but strikes in the scratch pair. I have a feeling you're gonna be seeing a lot of that. Both teams again in the top three of the New England North. Mm -hmm. They clearly know what the heck they're doing. Their teams definitely do. I think this is gonna be a high scoring affair, at least on the scratch side. And Souza up and Souza a little high Ooh. on the head, leaving the four pin. I actually thought that messenger was gonna take it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did a little spin rooney, but it didn't, it didn't hit it as soon as they would like to. Matter of fact, it didn't hit it at all. And right now, nothing but marks on the scratch side. We already have opens on the handicap side, so we're gonna stay on scratch for a while, I think. Anchor bullet, there are three straight strikes down the line. Esther Hanson Thompson for identity crisis. So far, one frame down, no problems. Yeah, Hanson definitely making music on the lanes. Sons is mm, last name. Mm-hmm. Mm, strike. <laughs> they yeah. said we are full of horrible, we're, horrible we're pins today. Early. We are, we are. And right now, it looks like um, everybody for for identity crisis definitely has their identity here, and they're they're identifying with strikes in all three of their first frames. So far, let's see if Derek Ham wants to follow suit for the House Hot Heroes. Now, just a reminder how the scoring works. You get two points per game, four points for series. There are three pairs you can get as many as 30 points, and then there's a 10-point bonus for overall wood. Whoever, obviously, whoever gets 21 or more points wins the match. However, points are determinate, meaning that if you win 21-19, it is not as good as if you win 38-2 to or 40-0. If you're on the losing end, you at least want to get to teams that are better. You do not want to get destroyed at 38 and 38 to 2. And if Identity Crisis wants to be relevant against Mop Nation, they want to win this matchup. Because if they do win this matchup, depending on what Mop Nation does first round, they will have a chance to take over first in the second tour stop. Mm, and speaking of first, um, even though that's only the second shot, that's the first one that he truly didn't like. And leaving the 2 8, thankfully, the 10 did not, did not stand up with that. First non-strike for identity crisis over the scratch pair. Can house shot here? Can house shot heroes capitalize? Mm -hmm. HSH. Gonzalez is up for HSH. Mm -hmm. Do a little acronym action here. 
That ball looks good. It is. Oh, Ooh. it is. I was about to say it's not nine pin, but yes, it is. Seems like the messengers are doing their work. Yeah, it's always Getting fine ready when you for kick Mother's out the Day. Nine. Always fine when you kick out the nine. Getting ready for a lot of deliveries. There we go. Convert to sweet. Yes, Hester will live in spare. <laughs> HSH 10, a slight 10 foot lead over Identity Crisis. Identity Crisis can get it right back with the strike from Hansen. Keep in mind, Hansen is up a strike spare to Souza. So if he doubles, Souza cannot match because the best he can do is a strike. He's not on one, he's only on a spare. Ball's going up, and there it is. He's happy. Yeah, he definitely liked that one off the hand. And I hear people from the TJ committee in the back going, come on, TJ. <laughs> they definitely bought the TJ section out here. TJ section's here. Ooh. And speaking of sections, Chris Hansen section's here. That's a double. We're tied once again on the scratch side. There's a lot of different bowlers named TJ, by the way. Yes, there is. We're going to stop. We have a TJ Valentin. We have a TJ Mobley. TJ Mobley. A lot of TJs, that seems to be fun. Also, it seems to be fun. Another double from House Shot Heroes. This one from Derek Ham. Right now, five marks, five on the board from HSH. Zachary Thompson looking to strike if he does, and we tie 5-5. Five, five. And again, tied on score going into the third frame. Yeah, one thing about a, having a scratch pair, no matter who you have on there, you want scratch players to do scratch things, and that right there is a scratch thing. That is a scratch thing. But Mr. Thompson, and now we're even 5-5 five, five marks, 5-5 five, five on score, mm -hmm. great in third frame. This is going to be fun, I think. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I, think, um, I think Thompson is definitely trying to bring some purple rain, you know, rocking the pants to match the jersey. Definitely wants to start a revolution. Ooh. That is not a revolution over there. No, no, no. Actually, it's um, two, to do with the baby four, bucket. Five. two, four, five. Now Gonzalez with a strike could give HSH a noticeable lead over in scratch. I mean, obviously it's early, but it can get late very quickly. Strike by Gonzalez. HSH takes the lead on scratch mm -hmm. for now. Meanwhile, Joey Naru is <laughs> making a cameo. <laughs> making a cameo appearance now. Joey Naru is very important in this case, so let me explain why. Number one, he is one of the bracket runners here. But number two, more importantly, he is the captain of Mob Nation Militia, who currently is in first place yep. in this district. Leader we of the will, nation. Yep, leader of the nation. We'll see them later on today. Ooh. And what he's hoping for is close. some sort of split so that Mop Nation Militia, and more importantly, Mop Nation Militia can have some sort of lead going into the next tour stop where a loss, they will still keep control of first. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll give some sort of reports in terms of what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. Mop's got a match going on. We'll see the results of it. Oh, right definitely. now, Chris Hansen keeps, takes the lead right back over for Identity Crisis because, again, did not double up from T.J. Souza. Souza makes a spare. So once again, potential 5-5 five, five here on marks. Yeah, so right here. So Souza definitely, uh, definitely um, looking like a 270 potential um, in the middle of a pretty, pretty good Pretty good sandwich there. Potential 300s for, for both top and bottom bowler. They're house Sousa, shot heroes. Sousa right now not completing the march that he wants to. He's still a little bit Whoa! Oh, still a little bit flat. Zachary Thompson almost like the 7 10. Go, they baby. both go down. Yeah. Message. Mess the messenger pin has been going out the window here at least 27 28. And that's what happens when you throw your good luck pants on right there, spreading the wings. Purple, purple rain pants and doves did not cry there on that one. And ham. ham. Ham is still there. Ham is trying to shank him. Maybe even get a, a ham shank. Green strikes and ham. Yep. All he needs is one more to complete that uh, that meat shank. Could, could you, could you, would you on 27? Could you, would you go to heaven? <laughs> By the way, I point this out because the Dr. Seuss library is five minutes away from here. So Dr. Seuss puns will be going out in full force. Jonathan Hester looking for a strike in full force in the fourth frame. Gets it. Yeah, that, that strike was in full force right there. And again, there. tied five mark to five marks mm -hmm. because of the because of the pin count in the frame three between Hester and T.J. Souza. Half shot here is with a very slight three pin lead. Yes, and emphasis on slight because every single frame matters, and when it's this close, every pin matters. 
So then the situation should arise if you happen to leave a split. Do you want to play, no pun intended, hero ball? Maybe well, you... why you just said that we have a split on least 20 or 30. Good, good job. Good I know, job, right? I told you. I'm, I'm taking your job as a dark cloud. And but now the scratch pair, though. No, not the scratch pair at all. Gonzalez is four in a row for HSH. Yes, yeah. Everybody. Keeping the pressure on now, can Hansen respond for identity no, crisis? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Uh, if, if someone says something, you have to have a good response. Let's see what the response is on lane 27. Response is, I got you covered, and I don't need no stinking messenger. That's what the response is. Nothing like a good back and forth conversation. They're conversing with one another, and it seems it's going to be a long debate. The on, pin whisperers. On game one. <laughs> Sousa right now looking to strike up the band. Uh, TJ Sousa want to be John Philip Sousa, uh, and he will not do a 10 pin. And for the first time in this mess, the messenger does not hit the projected target. No. 10 pin still stays up there. And does not continue to Dutch World Tour. Look like he had a potential Dutch situation. Um, that was not passing the Dutchie. No, he did not pass the Dutchie. Not even, but it was on the right side. Thompson looking for four in a row, Whoa. and he's no. Oh, almost talked up a, a Pat Hollis there. Almost left a whole bunch of roses there from Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Susan will make a corner. Penny will. Oh, does that count as converting a split being at the pin was standing up in the back? Technically, technically it does. Won't show on the scoreboard. Strike. Nine spare strike, nine spare, nine spare for TJ Souza. Mm -hmm. And when you have a two eight, spend any kind of double wood. Uh, makeable, yet missable. Chances are it's going to be made. Chances are correct. There you go. And however, and a big however here, mm -hmm. Derek Ham yep. has a shot to give identity uh, to give a top shot here. So I'm sorry, a, a bigger lead here with a strike, and they'll be up five to four in terms of account. They were up four. Strike here puts them up by 14. Here's that ball. That ball looks good. It's got to hurry. It does. Oh, it hurries. Corner over Ham. That's right. That's right. And we have our first Ham. <clears throat> well, we have our first four. four connect four. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Cody Woody with a hand bone, Cody Woody all alone, and he's not doing it all alone because his teammate, the leadoff bowler, Mark Gonzalez, is also four in a row. As we go into the fifth frame of game one, and sort of peering over, yeah, actually you got ABC, which is House Shot Heroes. So far, between the both of them, combined up by a combined 108 on the handicap side, which means that Identity Crisis has got to start making some hay here. Mm -hmm. Hester right now with the strike and the double. But eyes on Gonzalez, mm -hmm. four in a row, looking for five. Definitely looking for five. Mark going up. Mark hits his mark, likes it. Hey! That's why he likes it. Sure does. He said, I'm going to keep striking, so that means that means you say my name right. Strikey, strikey, number five, HSH is staying alive. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you're going to get this from me from Seussical to Musical. Again, mm. for those that just joined, the Dr. Seuss Museum, five minutes away from here because he was born in Springfield, Massachusetts. Yes, he was. And you know what? Speaking of spring, let's see if this ball springs up. And it does. kicks out the ten. Five in a row for Hanson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do but that. Sousa looking to fill Sue here, and he does not. Seven pins. Mercifully, did not leave a seven ten. Yeah, he could have left a whole bunch of pins go off that seven. Only seven pins stood up. Hey, he, he hit that ball a little too hard, tried to get up the ten. He got the ten out, but he almost left well, a much bigger situation to deal with. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Thompson high oh. on the seven. Yeah, it's a little bit, everybody's like, what the heck, that should have gone out. No, it shouldn't. That was too high. That was sorry. Fast nine. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> fast nine, but that was also too high. That was not buried in the pocket like his other shots were. Well, Sousa was all over his seven pin. Let's see if uh, Thompson right there can, well, match it up. Meanwhile, while he's doing that, Eric Ham looking for five in a row himself. Mm -hmm. Again, Green looking for green strikes and Ham. Mm-hmm. Should be able to make this. And he does. Ham needs to strike to keep that 14 pin lead. Yes. For HSH. And it's a thin, like, it's always a thin line between a miss or a make. 
and for every strike that's not made. Spears converted, still very good, but what happens when the other team has two strikers, one on the top, one on the bottom? That's a good tag team situation. That is a good tag team situation. We're looking at the bottom here. He's got it. Five in a row for Ham. Five in a row for Gonzalez. It's hammer time. It's hammer time. It is hammer time. It's hammer time. And he's got an arm, so what we call him arm and hammer? Hammer. <laughs> uh, and it's hammer time, and right now he's nailed the first five strikes. Yeah, bacon Yes, soda. folks, we're comedians, we're puns, and again, right by the Dr. Seuss Museum. Yeah, he's got bacon soda. That's right. <laughs> And oh man. So we're we're, so we're hitting the HSH crowd behind us right now. Yeah, it seems telling like Hester's ball to stand up and fight telling the seven pin to stand up and fight. He does. Now can Gonzalez, can Gonzalez take advantage? Looking for the front six here. Here's a shot. That ball looks good. It is six oh. in a row. Gonzalez, Gonzalez. All over the situation. Understands the assignment. He knows that not every hero wears a cape. And in this case, the heroes are donning their jerseys and they're floating like capes and they're trying to fly high to the sky right now. Well, here's the interesting thing, and I'm not going to have Anthony move the camera just quite yet, but eyeballing lanes 31 and 32, those aren't the only bowlers that are throwing 300s on the scratch oh, side. Yeah. And those aren't the only bowlers that are throwing it for house shot heroes or A, B, and C. Ooh. Come on, Fab Boys! Sousa. Sousa, a.k.a. he's being called Fat Boy. Well, like Again, that's being called by somebody else, not by me. I'm just reporting and repeating what is being mentioned behind us. Well, doesn't matter how big you may look on camera to some people, because your team is doing big things. And right there, a big response by Mr. Hansen. That's a big response by Hansen, however, and a big however here. He, only one person on one time can go three in a row. So one person shooting six in a row will not beat two people shooting six in a row. Yep. Susan gets a spare, which is all well and good. However, and a big however here, we're looking at hammer time in the sixth frame. Look for the halfway mark from Ham. Yeah, I know Susan right now has to be singing a certain insurance theme song. Maybe a like funeral church at this point. <laughs> like a good neighbor, his teammates are definitely yes. there and they are holding him up. And again, we will not be singing it because we don't have copyrights. No, we do not. And, and we're not getting paid royalties. Well, it seems like um, Thompson has copy and, he has copy and paste on his corner pins. Yeah, well, he's copying them. I mean, he doesn't necessarily too thrilled about pasting them. And like a, well, true teammates to the end. Can't see on the other pairs, but it seems like what one leaves, the other one leaves as well. Let's see if it's nothing is left. Up. Nothing hey, is left on the ramp. Have a time. Yeah, what time is it? Time, oh, goodness gracious. I didn't use the baby part. Hammer time, baby. <laughs> six in a row for Ham, six in a row for Gonzalez. Apparently, this is what happens when you pronounce his name correctly. Yes, indeed. So anyone who's not said his name right, and, he, and if he didn't shoot well, he's blaming you. I'm blamed for everything. If, there, if there's a snowstorm right now, I'd be blamed for that. Well, there's another earthquake, I would be blamed for that. Well, it started raining. I'm being, I'm being blamed for right now. And right, speaking of raining, he rained down in the pocket right there, understanding that they have to step on the gas and hopefully, you know, not, not get dug into a hole. You don't want to be in a hole early. But right now, they're in a 35 pin hole over on the scratch side. Joe oh. Warhill right now talking trash yeah, to me. He, he definitely got out of the run really fast. He pushed that one hard, like his timing was off, and he forced that one out. And we have our first our first split, six right, count of that. Let's go, baby, let's go. Let's go. Open over for HSH. That uh, gives Identity Crisis a little bit of a shot to get back into this one. However, if they want to do that, Hanson's got to produce. And when I say produce, that means it's got to be strike number seven coming up. There's and the ball. That does look like strike number seven. Nope. Oh, no, that's too high. It did not. He, he definitely yeah. lost speed on that one. Not the same aggression. Agreed. Um, and right there, he... It's oh. still up there. I thought it was going to go down also. It does not. Yeah. The first open from anybody on the stretch. Yeah, it took out three and a possible there. It made contact, but not enough to knock it over. I feel maybe what happened with um, with Hanson is that he may have saw the split and got a little too cautious. He probably felt like he needed it more than he wanted it. I agree with you there. I also felt like you're right. Over Overcompensation on that. So that is now his six and row is over. Gonzalez is six in a row is over. Ham is still can go for seven in a row. Yeah. And Fat Boy takes Gonzalez a strike. Strike 
terms of now identity crisis. Trying to get back into this one on the scratch side. HSH still on two in a row. And by the way, seven in a row for both HSH bowlers on handicap two. If mm. that stays the same on the 10th frame, I am gonna see if we can take some little bo bonus coverage on that. Oh, right now, let's stay on the scratch side because Ham's got the front six, looking for front seven. And speaking of seven, we have a seven count here. But from what I feel was an unnecessary surface change, feeling the need to try to get to the pocket, get a different look. Seven in a row for Ham. And seven in a row for What, what is that again? Ham a time, baby! Hammer. That would be, for the translation, that would be Hammer Time Baby. Yes, it was. And apparently he's too legit to quit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, I can't touch that. No, 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 wait, <laughs> we're not getting paid for singing, so. Again, we do not have copyrights. Uh, yeah, well, let's talk about the situation going on with Thompson. Thompson had a very good look at the pocket. Really hasn't missed the pocket. Chain surfaces, got, got a look he didn't like. And, but he definitely liked that double. Did Mr. Hester. Yeah, well, that's 2 for Hester. More importantly, here comes Identity Crisis. They had a chance to be buried in this matchup. However, an unfortunate open from HSH. And now they're only down by 14 with a double on top, which means Gonzalez has got to get back on the horn, and he's got to get back on relatively quickly. The one good thing for him is that Sousa and, ha and Ham are both on strikes. Obviously, Ham still has got seven in a row. Mm. He's not made a mistake yet. Gonzalez looking to get back on the strike train. Oh, and that's that two way. times. And, oh, my goodness. Two, eight, ten. Yeah, we had a double leakage there. He leaked it last frame. He leaked it this frame. So it means he's definitely a consistent shooter because even his mistakes are consistent. But he Me needs to have, make consistent adjustments as well. However, I'm going to point this out. The yeah. only thing that is close right now is the scratch matchup. Yeah. On the handicap matchup, and no, this is not a typo. No, I am not saying this wrong. How shot heroes are up by a combined 260 pins. Jeez. And are threatening for more. Hello. Yes. So this, you, you can't win a match in game one. You can't lose one. Well, and um, the handicap on, on both sides of identity crisis have got a lot, and I mean a lot of work to do. We'll get back to that again if it still stays like that in the 10th frame. Both bullers on outside heroes, front eight on handicap two. Well, it seems like the only hero, the only people that need heroes right now might be identity crisis. Right now, crisis. identity crisis needs a hero. They need a hero to help out in the middle of the night. And right now, <laughs> TJ Souza with a big double, and now we go to Ham. Ham front eight. Yes. And so like now we have not one, not two, but oh, oh boy. Well, it's not Sunday, but the church is open. Church is open. The Greek and, one at that. And and at the end of this first game. Identity Crisis may want to be saying amen at this point. Yeah, opa. But they may need a lot of prayers. Let's see if it's an opa. Come on, Kugelberg. Pick it up. And right now, on seven, looking for eight. Here's a shot. That ball looks good. A little bit light, Perry. A little light tickle. Hammer time. Let's go. Front eight. Let's go. However, and, and more interesting, or just an interesting story, those are the bench, bench warmers. Well, we got two bench warmers, apparently, based on the peanut gallery. Mm. And, and the bench right now has got front nine on one. So at the end of the ninth frame, I will be signaling over Anthony to go over to lanes 31 and 32. Joe Boy, he'll yell. And it is very possible or even probable that there could be a plus 400 on both handicap pairs mm. from house shot heroes. Mm. I could, How would it feel if you guys were up plus 400 pins after game one? Because right like now it could happen. Now we have the bench out here. These Explain guys, to me why they're bench warmers. They needed to get nine games. This is why they're out here. We usually come out flush with heavy hitters. They're here to you bowl. Did. It's hammer you time. Me. You, you got your two. You got your two nine average bowler right now for front eight. We sure do. Bench warmers. It's a house shot. You're a house shot here. House shot. Not every hero is wearing a cape apparently. And no, no. And Joe Bornhill told me we this before. We are a new team and we are bringing it. Yeah, I was we having. We are fighting for those playoffs. 
And you know, I was talking with Joe earlier, and you know, he mentioned he said, you know, we got a lot of hitters. We do. And you know, our, our low our low bowlers right now are, are two ten and whatnot. So, you know, he he said, but we're gonna we already had we had to bring in guys that's gonna compete. And I see what he's talking about. We had to. We had. We had to. Well, and but they're definitely doing that. This is a very good team, however, and a big however here. We're going to go to lanes 31 to 32. Yes, we are. Well, we're going to chat about Derek Campbell momentarily, and, and I will tell you what he does, but we're going to go to 31 to 32 right now because not one, but two bulls in the house shot here. He's got the front nine, and we're going to start with Ross Backstrom. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's up there, and yeah, we'll be, we'll be focusing on them in game three. But Ross, but we're going to be focusing on him right now. Ross Backstrom is your leadoff bowler. Your anchor bowler is Michael Morrissey. Both of them have the front nine going to the 10th frame. Backstrom, first shot here. That ball looks good. It is 10 in a row. Backstrom with front 10. By the way, the UBA record for a trio shot is 879 with two 300s and a 279. That will not happen here. Who shot that? Very, very, uh, that was BC Crew. Yes, shout out to BC. Shout out, shout out to BC. Shout out to um, Dwight Nutflowers who won 299 last night. Neither here nor there, but we always acknowledge the legends, but right now we are acknowledging Backstrom on front 10. Now, are we going to acknowledge him on the front 11? That is the question. And the answer is yes, we are. Ooh. 11 in a row for Backstrom as we go into the 12th frame. Yes, front 11 creating a stairway to heaven on his first game. Meanwhile, they're still in the ninth frame over on the scratch side. Yes, we're going to go over to scratch momentarily, but first. I haven't seen three bowlers hitting the tray bomb in a very long time in one game. I'm not sure the last time that's happened, but if it's happening now, it's a good thing we're on Caffeine TV to see history here. Yeah, it looked like we're straight out of Compton. It certainly might be a tray day. Frame. This is for 300 and right now. Oh. Hey, whoa. Ross Backstrom, 300 for House Shot Heroes. Now, usually I would say that this is the highlight of the game, but it's not the highlight of the game no, yet because we got two more bowlers that have the chance for immortality. We are not done. We are not done. We're just getting started. We're going to see Adam Portrait, <laughs> and I, I hate to say that he's sort of the side piece right now, but he's, he's the side piece at this point. He's going to get a little bit of Caffeine TV time. Yeah, let's go. Oh, 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 by the way, I'd also like to point out that one of the house shot heroes also, if he goes out the door, will only shoot a 290, which when you think about it, it's only going to be fourth best on the oh, team. Right, we got Ham. And, Ham. Oh, oh. and Ham leaving a nine count, leaving a nine pin. Great run, front nine. Great run, front oh, so nine. Front, front eight. He went front eight. Nine I'm pin. sorry, front eight. Leaves the nine pin so he doesn't get the front nine. However, we're going to stay on 31 and 32 because we're not done with the fun yet. David Napier right now, if he goes out the door, may be feeling like a slacker at this point. May have to speak to Joe Borhill about this. Joe Borhill would be a major slacker. If he goes out the door for a 269, there may be four bowlers that will be better than him. Four, I know, right? Isn't that something? Which is one of the reasons why potentially outside heroes may be up by close to 500 pins after game one. Can you say that one more time, please? I thought here is maybe up by, by close to 500 pins after game one. Because right now, they're over 400 pins by the two handicap pins alone. All right, Moore Hill's going to finish with the 268. Identity Crisis. Now, Identity Crisis has got a shot. Four. Oh, we got four. our first four. Well, you do that, you do that on the film. So one, 199 from Portrait, who's probably going to be the low bowler. <laughs> but Joe, I'd like to point out that you have a 268, and you may only be the fifth best bowler on your team this game. You're a slacker. Is that, you know, so I, Joe, you got a 268, and you might only be the what the, the fifth, fifth best bowler on your team. <laughs> You're a slacker, Joe. Uh, Joe is even supposed to bowl. Listen, I own the team, but I don't bowl every match. So I let the guy shine. Yeah, meanwhile, David Napier may have a very silent 290 after all this. Yeah. All right, anyway, back, back to 31 and 32. Yes. Michael Morrissey right now, he's got the front nine. He is looking for the front ten. And hey. a sloppy mix, that's good. Well, his name is Morrissey, not Liz. Why is he wearing the glasses? 
Exactly. Yeah, so John Borhill says that Michael Morrissey is wearing the glasses because he doesn't know where, where he's going anyway in terms of the shot. He doesn't have a clue what he's looking at. That's according to Borg. Okay, anybody that wants to complain about that, that goes to Joe Borhill saying that Morrissey's wearing the glasses. What? Yeah, Morrissey. So he said more. Morrissey. So more. Not less. Michael Morrissey's looking for much more. Second shot here. Coming up front 10. And, and we're going to explain the full and complete carnage momentarily. Because this is carnage. Second shot here. He's looking for 11. And he gets oh, another man. last shot. Light shot's good. Light watch him fight. Morrissey right now. Cool as the other side of the shadow. I'm not going to say the word because that would be copyright infringement. Yeah, that's right. Well, he, well, they're definitely infringing on identity crisis right now. Yeah, identity may be looking for a new identity after this first game. Because, yipes. All right, they won't be up plus 500. They will be up plus over 400, it looks like, after game one. Mm. Again, I'm going to write down the carnage here because, yeah, yeah we got carnage. Uh, we, we could either call it uh, recap or we can maybe call it exhibit A at this point. And that's going to hurt. Only five minutes after we get one from Ross Baxter. So we got 799 scratch. That's it, 799. As Borhill said, he's disappointed they can only go 799 scratch, and that's exactly what they do. 300, 199, 300. The only good thing is that for identity crisis, if they can cut the deficit to under 200, I'm not sure. If that's really that, oh, or maybe not. There's a five, five count there. And right there, looking at that, 300, 199, 300. Very, very, very similar to a, a, a nice thick burger where it's only like thick pieces of bread. All right, we're going to go back no to 27, 28 right now. <laughs> so, how shot looking to complete the sweep here? Is he going to get the messenger? No. There is a little bit of drama still. <laughs> Over on this side, not a ton, but there is still drama. Hams does have to throw another mark here. If he does, House Shot Heroes will get the sweep. If he opens. Like he just did. Like he just, well, no, that's not Ham. Oh, sorry, not But Ham. if Ham opens and Thompson goes out the door, mm -hmm. then, identity, then Identity Crisis will get some sort of. There we go! So, basically what you're saying is Thompson needs Ham to, to give him a chance. Yeah, he, he needs stale Ham at this point. Yeah. Well, well, Ham has certainly been slicing away at them with each shot that he's thrown, with the exception of one where he, he blew out and left a, left a nine pin. It looks like Thompson found something there. Well, he did. However, in a big however, here comes Ham. Yeah, we're going to get to the full, complete carnage of this one momentarily. You gotta wonder what Mop Nation Militia is thinking watching this. They're thinking, we're glad we don't have to bowl House Shot Heroes game, too. I'll tell you that. That is, oh, it's still got some work to do. Ten yeah. pins up there. Yep. Has a chance to tie, <laughs> tie Joe Bornhill. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the irony of this is that the scratch side is the worst side for House Shot Heroes right now. Which, again, goes to what I was talking to Mr. Borgo about before. As we see, a UBA OG herself, Pat Halis. The 2 eight, the two eight ten. Yeah, right and there, Joe like. Borhill just waved bye-bye. Yes. He's absolutely right from a mathematical standpoint. This game is over. Bringing that Yonkers energy is Borhill. Native of Yonkers. New York. Well, energy from Boyhill, energy from the crowd, and, and there is no reason to not have it. To beat Boyhill. <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. No, and not to beat. Ham, Ham is going to pick up the spare. Yep. That's a sweep round one? That would be a sweep. That would be a sweep ski round yeah. one. It's a little spring cleaning on, on huh. game one. Yeah, identity crisis, not getting the identity that they're looking no. for, clearly. I see um, definitely left their IDs at home for game one. Hopefully they can take a quick trip. They, they've, been carded and, they've been carded, and right now they're being stopped by detained by security. Yes, they are. 
What they don't want to do is be escorted out of the center. And uh -oh. oh, he didn't want Boren Hill to get the Not one pin stretch. <laughs> They won by 200, and is that right? Yes, it is. They won by a lot. Mm. So here's the here's the bad thing about that. And I'm trying to get a verification on the scores. Yeah. I, I will let Sean do a little chatting here while I'm getting the verification on the scores. Okay. Yeah, Sean. So, um, first game one was very intense um, on one side. And it was a very one-sided game. But here's the good and the bad thing, as you see an open right there in frame one right here on lane 29. The good thing is that it happened early. Because you potentially can chop down on it each game because it's very hard to make that up in one game, especially when you're fighting from the bottom. Um, the bad thing is that it happened at all. So what needs to happen is identity crisis needs to snap out of whatever just happened and have what I like to call short-term memory in terms of what just happened. Because now there's a new game and each frame is a new frame. And let's see if they adopt that mindset. And as you can see on that shot, they did not, being very tentative on each shot, leaving two splits. Right there, a split in frame one for each of the bowlers. We're on lane 29 and 30. Yeah, we're talking about 29 and 30 right now. Three, 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 six, four, seven, and the 10 with that, and he only takes out the right side. Yeah, so, Gordon's uh, back, and I actually I was talking about this before. And I said, well, the not so bad thing even though it's really bad, it's the deficit is deep. Good news is that it happened early. Well, you you it, have a chance to yes. get yourself out of the hole. I would like to point out, and yes. this was done by my team when, we, when I was part of the Good Brothers, mm. the record for first game deficit, 637 pins. Which still holds? Which still holds. Which still holds. Not as bad, however, 437 pins. Well, Shalafu. So Identity Crisis has got a lot of work to do, and the fact that they have two opens right now in the first frame is not a good sign. So right now, we are on lanes 29 and 30. Have we done the lineups yet? I don't think we've done the lineups, so let's do lineups. I will, to help them out, I will do the Identity Crisis lineup. Start us off with House Shot Heroes, sir. All right, well, for House Shot Heroes, handicap here at home, we have owner right here, proud owner, the, Joe Borhill. The aforementioned, <laughs> Joe Borhill. Uh, David Napier, and we have Denny Koo. David Napier, by the way, a very quiet 278. We weren't talking about that. Identity crisis, and we're not going to be talking about any of their scores on game one. Brian Egan, Sean, is on top. Sean Egan in the middle. David Shalfu is on the bottom. And Shalfu right now is the only person that's got a strike for identity crisis in the first frame. And then when you, and like, just like you alluded to before, he's the only person that um, had any kind of mark in, in the first frame. And you gotta wonder if um, that puts pressure on you, especially as an anchor bowler, you see that maybe the body language is reading that you're feeling defeated at the first game and you're the anchor and you're trying to fight from the bottom, you're trying to lift everybody up. And at some point, you gotta be able to lift yourself up to take some pressure off the bottom. We're gonna see what identity crisis is made of. You know, you've seen Murder Inc. come mm -hmm. back from under 200 down. You've seen... Release the Kraken. Release the Kraken. <laughs> you've seen Garden Foundation. Mm -hmm. You've seen Impact. You've seen other teams come back down from under 200 or even more to come back and at least put a scare on the other team to not win the match outright. Yes. And that so, ball came back too hard for Napier. Right now you got to put some pressure on. I mean, that, that's what it is at this point. And Identity Crisis is starting to do that a little bit, but that's only a scratch pair. So let me put up some numbers here, mm -hmm. okay? Obviously, you had two 300s. Yes, we did. From House Shot Heroes. You also had a 278 uh -huh. and a two, two 268s. So your top five bowlers have shot almost 270 on you. Mm. Lead to that, a 222, a 206, a 239. Almost feels like the 239 is pedestrian based on all the other scores. Yeah. And a 199. I mean, that's where, I, I don't know, maybe you want to bring in a, a relief bowler for the 199. Teasing, of course. And when you look at Identity Crisis, only one bowler was better than the 239. So only one bowler was better than sixth. Mm. Other team, 
Yeah. And that's Chris Hansen. So they've got a lot of work to do, and they need to do it relatively quickly. And now, while Identity Crisis has finally gotten on the board a little bit, they need a lot more help. And Shafu is here, and he needs to desperately put on a dump. And he almost left a split. Four pin up on the board. Four pin on the board, yeah. which is not terrible based on that. But again, yeah. that is not going to help you. It is not. Crack open a 437 pin lead. Yeah, potential double almost turned into certain trouble. Get, breaking up any potential split there. Let's see what happens on the side with Mr. Is that Egan? Is it, no, no, no. Yeah, Egan up. Egan not necessarily waiting. They have Egan on the lead off here, Shafu and the anchor. And I'm going to want to chat with Mr. Porthill after his shot with their frame. I'm, I'm, def I'm sure he'll definitely won't mind chatting. Oh, he's uh, certainly not. He's already been chatting. He, he's been, but he's been yelling, but I'm not sure that that's been picked up on the microphone. So we'll definitely have to chat with Joe Borhill. Momentarily, I didn't need crisis. Is looking for, uh -oh. ooh. Hmm. Ball took a little while. It was uh, taking a look around, taking the scenic route. Yeah, it took the scenic route to get there. It did get there. So right, right now, if you've just tuned in, if you're a fan of Identity Crisis, you're probably not going to want to stick around. Maybe go to another UBA broadcast. Maybe go to see, like, the Wild Fluffy Bunnies channel. I don't know what to tell you on that. If you are a House Shot Hero fan, come in. Come watch, because House Shot Heroes are up by 437 pits. That is not a typo. That is not an error. They're up by 437 pits. So I'm going to chat with Borhill. Well, 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 I saw Hagen right there. I know Borhill, Borhill's got something to say. Oh, he's definitely got something to say. Hagen has something to say with that double, saying that they're still here. I know. So, so, so right now, you guys are up by 437. Now, you said something which I want you to explain to microphone. Oh, the job's not done. You still got a lot of work to do. 435 is nothing. Look, we beat them by that, right? So who's to say they can't beat us by that? Job ain't done. We still got a lot of work to do. We still got to push these boys to do their best. All right. So, whoa, whoa. So, so Joe, even though you're a hero, you're out here talking like a villain, man. It's not Absolutely. Well, I've been a villain my whole life. That's why the nickname is Problem Child, baby. <laughs> so, Joe, let me ask this question. Come back, come back here. One, one last question. Sir. Now, as you know, Identity Crisis gets Mob Nation later on today. You yeah, get some other team. a lot more from this. So, my hold up next. We ain't nothing compared to them. Well, so my, my question to you is this. Are you hoping that whatever frustration they have from you, they take it out on Mob Nation later? Um, I mean, they can't do any worse than they're doing. So, I mean, I guess they have no choice, right? They got to do something better than what they're doing or else they can, we're gonna, they're going to get ran through all day. He's not wrong. You know what I'm saying? They got to do a lot better than what they're doing now or else Mob Nation's going to run through them even worse than we just did. Mm. Facts. Facts. Well, based on what he said, he's saying he, he, the train can keep wrong. on running. I mean, I mean, right right now, it's only a freight train. It could be a Mack truck, maybe an SST that in the form of Mob Nation later on. However, let's focus on this game. Yeah. We're going to focus on um, Daniel, uh, Danny Koo that just doubled up right there, potential 290 finish uh, versus potential 280 finish for Shallow Fu. Yeah, half shot here is right now up by 24. For identity crisis, you need to cut that down. Hey, there's more. looking to double. He doesn't. Four pin. Okay. A little high on the head right there. A little high on the head right there. Egan. But definitely attacks down and in. Attacks aggressively. Throws it like a truck. Hits it like a truck. And, well, the numbers the numbers didn't, didn't lie when he shot his 268 game one. Let's see what Egan has right over here on lane 30. 30 doing him dirty right there. Another Pat Halise, 2810. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing. Ah, uh, yes, please. So it is one thing if you're marking. Mm -hmm. It's another thing if you're opening and giving HSH free reign to do whatever the heck they want. Yeah. And right now, if you are starting to lose your lead or be, buttoned, be put in a bigger hole uh -huh. because you have marks being thrown at you, wait what happens when you have strings being thrown at you. Yes. And it seems like they have all the pins on a string, and they're doing anything that they, they so please right there as Napier uh, well, blows up the rack. It's only going to be a matter of time until you get the transition. And if House Shot Heroes, oh boy, if House Shot Heroes figures out the transition for White Entity Crisis, that 437 may be peanuts compared Let's to what may happen. Boy. 
Well, just like the scores, you want to stay ahead of scores, and you want to stay ahead of transition. And they are definitely on top of it, are the house shot heroes. Well, feeling like villains, like I said today, is that told Boy Hill. Because it's very villainous what they're doing to the identity crisis here. Well, right, right now, the identity crisis are bullying like they're damsels in distress because they are really in distress, and that does not help. Mm. Danny Koo, a.k.a. Cuckoo Bird, mm. he's found something. He did shoot 239 game one. Now he may be shooting a lot better, as you said, and it won't shock me if he goes out the door and shoots a 290. Well, Danny Koo right here, like you said, Cuckoo Bird pecking away at them with each shot, and oh. And that doesn't help. Yeah, well, it's... Okay to be patriotic, but we don't want to have any kind of American flags, and he just definitely flagged that, that spear right there. Four makeable open, well, not makeable, but four opens right now for Identity Crisis. They have a 54 and a 65 in the fourth frame. This could get very ugly quickly. Mm. Identity Crisis is already down by 30. The two plus the two opens make it 50. Mm. If he doesn't strike here, it's 60. And if he opens, it's more than 70 in the fourth frame. And keep in mind, they lost that first game by over 200 pence. Uh, everything uphill on the side of Boar Hill and crew and downhill for Identity Crisis from, from the looks of what's happening right here. Shao, Shao Fo leaves the seven. Mm. Meanwhile, if you're wondering, well, what's every, what's House Shot here is doing on the other two pair? Right now, they're up on scratch by around 25. The only one that they're in trouble losing right now is the second handicap, where it looks like Identity Crisis has finally found something. House Shot here at the three opens. Mm. Yeah, definitely no, <laughs> no mustard, no help. mustard at all. Um, Third game on is that just going to be a swap. Right the third game is going to be a swap over by Identity Crisis. I'm not sure how hopeful it's going to be at this point. Well, you got to try whatever whatever you feel you, you, you can try throw, at this point. You got to throw everything at the wall and hope something sticks. You got to do something. Scratch right now, the difference is 13. That is the only game that is remotely close. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm not sure if you can hear what's going on in the background. A in lot. the background, the House on Heroes fan club is thrilled that Identity Crisis is putting in is putting in a new bullet to the point where they're talking about, well, what happens to be bowl worse than the bullet that's already in there? And then the other person says, well, they can't bowl worse. Uh-oh. That is the first potential open by Borhill, as we see a 4-9. Uh-oh. Well, Borhill says, hey, you want to throw some money up on there? Well, so Borhill right now says, hey, you want to toss some crap? I got some money. Oh, hey. Want, want, to, want to talk that, back that up with some money? He said, reach into your pocket. He said, reach in, re, he said, reach in and touch some yeah. green. Yeah. And, um, Re right. Reach into the pants and touch some green. Get your mind out of the gutter. We're talking wallet. Very good. Turn the cash. And He's got a shot at now. All right. So first open of the day for, for Borhill. First open by the Boar Hill, by Boar Hill for HSA. Mm -hmm. And before you can say, oh, well, that spells trouble. No, it doesn't really no, it because doesn't. you got a strike and a double on the way. Now, if they follow suit, maybe it'll spell trouble. We shall see. They're, they're going to need a lot more of that to happen, does Identity Crisis, uh, for them to have a shot. And in, in turn, they also have to start doing something and wait a you minute. You mean like that? Hmm. Napier with his first potential open. Okay. Maybe? Well, like I said, Maybe? the only solace is that that happened game one. We've seen we've seen comebacks before. We have. We've called them. That would be one of the, we have. That would be one of the biggest comebacks ever in UVA history to come back down by 437 pins. Is it possible? Yes. Is it doable? Sure. Is it doable when you're shooting 70s and 90s in the fifth frame? No. Yeah. The output's got to be a lot better than that. Because this is transition, eventually, Ash on here is going to figure it out. And the damage is going to be minimal if Kuth throws another strike here. That would make it four in a row, and they only lose one mark. So they'll only be up by around 46 and change. Mm -hmm. And we've got Danny Koo up here. Potential 290 finish, provided that he goes back 11. Let's see we've if, seen happen. Let's see if Cuckoo Bird remains Cuckoo. He's not going to be a dodo, He's right? He's going to be a is going to make him a dodo bird. Well, maybe not. You know, just took a little blue tablet. You can still take it down. Boy, so if he, makes a spare, if, he makes, if he makes a spare, they're going to be up by around 30 pence. 
was putting a little bit of spark. That being said, I think you guys this definitely has some work to do. If you look at both pairs, I didn't quite as maybe starting to wake up. Maybe. Maybe. Who will make the spare? They got him on the board. All over the 10 pin. I see the board hill guy. Looks like board hill's gonna convert his. No problem on that. So right there, you see Boyle Hill right there making up for um, his fifth frame debacle. That was his only open of the day so far. And right now we have Aegon. Brian Aegon. Or Brian Egon. Egon up. And Egan with the 10 pin, Egan taps. You see a, a, a ball change that happened there right there. Definitely found the pocket, locating the pocket is part one of trying to find some kind of potential success in a comeback. Let's see if Napier can find, yes, he, find, he relocates the pocket. He lost it last shot, that one he liked. You know, I did realize something as we are five minutes away from the Dr. Seuss Museum. Uh -huh. If they're using a sub, yes. one of the bowlers that will be leaving, will you please go now? I'm here all day, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gordon Pepper. The Pepper. I'm here all day, folks. You got me for this match, and you got me for the next one. And you know what? And Dr. We, Seuss Museum's not going anywhere. And, and, and we got Identity Crisis uh, following. And hopefully, um, they, can, they can definitely put up a, a much better fight. Not to say that this fight is over, but they don't want to be in a hole like they're in now. And cool well, the, the fight's, the fight's with the shovel not, in his hand right now. Fight's definitely not over. I mean, the, the overall wood is probably out the window, but maybe you can get to 10, 15 points. Maybe, like I, I mean, said. You, you still have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 points. The overall wood in, the overall wood in scratch is still very close. That's only 20. So if you can get 16 points out of this, which is I feel is left on the table, if you can yeah. get 16 and you only lose 24, 16, that's a moral victory. That's yeah, big. Yeah. And, and then the word of the day, honestly, in my mind right now is dope. It's either rope -a dope by Identity Crisis or it's a dose of dopamine being <laughs> being administered by Housefile Heroes. Well, Identity Crisis is starting to wake up. Now let's see if they continue to wake up. No. Oh. 10 pin, they always try to cut down to that lead. So it's now under a 30 pin lead for HSH mm -hmm. in the middle pair. Identity Crisis looking to Look at at least make up ground, if not take this outright. And I say this because, and again, we're not going to go there yet, but Gino Benamino has got the front seven. Yeah, just talk, let's talk about um, Ryan Egan over here. So I go to with Egan, he made a surface change. He liked what he got last shot. But when you're playing that inside, and when the insides are always going to be erratic, there's always going to be oil to be manipulated, always be oil to play with. And then again, you always have to dictate everything shot by shot. When you see with Borehill going down and in, his look is really not changing. It well, hasn't changed, it's not going to change. Seems to be the shot. If you're going to make the adjustment, maybe a little bit slower, maybe a little bit outside, but I don't know. Maybe I just add the speed. Yeah, he has, Could be just a speed thing. Yeah, he has that kiss strategy. He keeps it simple. And he's not going to be silly about it. It definitely, that definitely seemed to be the pattern here. Especially, you can't argue game one in terms of the success that House Shot Heroes has had. Warhill looking to pick it back up. Ooh. Well, that was the wrong adjustment. He clearly didn't pick up the speed, which is a problem. And he yeah. didn't keep it down and in, which is another problem. The yeah. result is five. Well, Borhill's got a lot of hand. He's got a lot of speed, but he's also got a lot of hand. When you hit in that area where everyone's getting erratic reads, being the mid lane, uh, all things are possible. Well, Hager right now with a double for Identity Crisis. He's starting to cut the lead down here a little bit, but he's going to need some help from House Shot Heroes. Yes, they do. By they're, the way, speaking of House Shot mm -hmm. Heroes, Gonzalez front seven. And again, if it gets to the 10th, we'll be covering it. Meanwhile, Borhill will not cover the spare. He's got an open. He probably is not thrilled that this is, he, we're not shooting his game one, 268. No. We are shooting game two with his 109 in the seventh frame. Well, they definitely laid a foundation in game one. So so they, they put in enough work to at least get some things off of their mind. 
So you can't rest on the fact that you're you're up by well damn near damn near 500 or well, damn near 450. You still gotta attack like it's still zero zero. Well, you still have to attack because yeah. again, all you have theoretically, all you have based on the numbers right now is as we said 24 points. Yeah. So you went six well actually not even that 20 yeah 20. 24 points. Yep. Again, Napier with this strike. Let's see if... Uh, That's a big double over by Napier. Let's see what's happening with Shalafo. Shalafo here, only on a spare. We get another strike by Ku. They will hold on to a 22 pin lead going into the A frame. Uh, Shalafo does show up in the, in the E on lane 29 with a strike in the seventh frame. He's got issues on lane 30. The question is, does Ku have issues on lane 30? No, he does not. Big no. double. They're even four, marks four and four. Half shot heroes up 20 and change going into the eighth frame. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I don't think Shalafo's a Dutch name, but he's certainly in the process of creating a whole Dutch game in game two. Ooh. However, Dutch is not good enough. Good ball change there by, by Bornhill. By the way, Gonzalez and Benamino, both front eight going into the ninth frame. 300s may be cheap today. Mm -hmm. Usually a 279 may be the highlight of the game. Could you imagine if it's not even in the top five? So we, we potentially could be um, going into two games and have four 300s. That is true. Nippier up. Ooh. Nippier with the tap. So double ah. and nine right there. Losing yeah. slight, a uh, little bit of wood, well, but not losing as much wood as he would have if it was not a nine, nine count. Another shot for identity crisis to start making some wood up. There's a strike over by Egan. Yeah, merciful Big shot coming up from Sean Hagen. If he can double, if he and Shelfo can double, they can either cut the wood down to under 10 or take the lead depending on what Danny Koo does. Yeah. Got to close frames. That's the big thing. You've got to close frames, at least just to stay in the conversation. And like you said, it's one thing if they're not striking, but when you're opening and the other team is not only striking, but they're marking as well, it, it makes it really hard to negotiate any situation, especially in your favor. Identity crisis starting to fall apart, by the way, on the scratch side. However, this pull on Hagen's got to hit it. He does. Yeah. Identity Crisis is still looking for their first points of this game, of this match. There is a very good shot. They will get the maybe, maybe? Maybe. On the handicap three pair, especially with one of them shooting a 300. However, his two teammates are starting to open. So now you're in a position where you may get the 300, but you may lose the game. Yeah, that's an accentuated question mark. You have a question mark on Identity Crisis jersey. Right now, you can use that uh -huh. question mark as what are they doing in this match? Yeah, they're creating a lot of riddles for themselves with those question marks in their jersey. Worse than Edward Nigma at this point. Mm. Worse than Frank Gorshin at this point. Well, Worse than Jim Carrey at this point. <laughs> mm. Speaking of Carrey, let's see if Shalafo can carry this one and get his first double of game two. Well, he needs it right now. There's a big strike coming up. If he can hit it, and he does not. Seven pin. Mm. Two strikes. They will maintain their 20-plus pin lead going in the ninth frame. Mm -hmm. well, we got front nine over there on front lane 31. Front nine over by Benamino. We'll go over there momentarily. Right now, we're going to finish out the eighth frame over here. Danny Koo coming up. Look to maintain 20 pins. If he gets a strike, and he will. And Koo with the strike. And he feels like he should be on back seven. He probably may have, yeah, he probably may have shut up front eight. You really want to look at it. Chalfo with the spare as we go into the ninth. Meanwhile, I'm going to eyeball the ninth over and scratch. Right. So I will let you know when we're going to switch over to 31 32. Right now, we're going to Brian Egan. Brian Egan up on lane 29. Oh, that was lightning paid for. Oh, 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 oh. seven pin went down. Well, he got a refund. Well, he got a refund. <laughs> However, is Joe Warhill going to make him pay right here? No, he will not. Ten pin. Made him pay with a good shot, but did not get the result he liked. Yep, Gonzalez, meanwhile, front nine. So we're going to be going over to 27 28 also. Look at all this fun we're having over here. So much fun. New England North was waiting for us to show up, yep. and they say, you know what? We're putting on a show. And they are putting on a show. Well, 
what better time to shoot these trades when you're on when you're on camera and you get a chance to put the rest of the UBL on notice, especially being playoff season and battle bowl season. Especially, is upon us. especially if your quote unquote bench warmers are shooting trades. Mm. So if you just joined us, Ross, Ross Backstrom already with the 300, Michael Morrissey already with the 300. Meanwhile, Mark Gonzalez and Gino Benamino both have the front nine, and they're looking to join the party. Yes, they are. On the handicap side, going on leads 29 and 30, Sean Hagan, a.k.a. Shredder. Mm -hmm. In order for them to keep this, this team relevant going into the 10th frame and keep this game relevant, there's got to be a strike coming up out of his hands. Mm. Oh, they, that's too late. Oh, we almost left Merciful a big nine count. open. And to their Napier. Napier's response. Oh, we got five minutes. Oh, well, uh, you what, you what, may what want to alert happen? him what happens if he doesn't make Okay, so what happens on your team if on you miss a five pin? If you miss the five pin, I buy nine bottles of powder and I powder your ass. Mm. You're getting powdered if you miss a five pin. There's no there's no buyouts? Is there buyouts? No buyouts, no, buyouts, no compa. Oh no! Oh, no, we got it. <laughs> there ain't no buyouts on this team. Well, Napier doesn't have to worry about it. He needs a spare. <laughs> And we was almost singing a little bit of Outkast because he was smelling so fresh. Yep. However, let's so go over right now. 31-32. Oh, 31-32. Gino Benigno, identity crisis. We are crisis. on front nine on 31-32. And, and this is the crazy part. This is a must 300 here because if he doesn't shoot it here, they may lose the game. And he doesn't lose the seven oh. pin, and all of a sudden, identity crisis, who I thought had the game won, don't. <laughs> He's got a seven ten, but that's only on the fill. That doesn't matter. I think we should, well, we're going to eventually go over to 27 28, and then we should go back over to 31 32. Yeah, Kill with a strike right here. That effectively will end game two. Mm -hmm. And how shot here is going to take the first two games on the handicap side. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, let's flip back over, over to a pair of one, 27 28. Gonzalez, front nine. <laughs> No, and by the way, that open from House Shot Heroes will mean that Identity Crisis will get on the board in terms of scoring. Let's see. Brian Egan up. And right now we're going to pick the spare. However, the story on 27-28, Mark Gonzalez, front nine. Yep. So we had 300, 300, we had 268, 268s, we had 279, oh, 279, we had 278. We have a 279. Mm -hmm. We got numbers up here in New England North. They, 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 they throw the rock out here in, in the Dini. They, they <laughs> certainly are. Now the question is, because the golf, does Gonzalez have three more strikes in him? Uh -huh. And again, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, not Gonzalez. Which again, we've been told at the beginning of the broadcast, do not pronounce his name Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. It is Gonzalez. And we are being rewarded because he put on a show, 22 yes. game one, but he had the front four in game one, which led half shot heroes to the scratch yeah. to cruise and scratch win. And uh, no sir, Tempin. Tempin stands up on him. Front nine. Tempin might have another 279. So right now we're gonna let's go back over to 31 and 32. Let's start on them early because they're gonna Okay. Alright, we're gonna finish up the frame. Over on lanes 29 to 30. Yeah, 179 for Brian Egan. Oh, they have a chance here. Let's see what Napier may, has to say. I may have, I was, I was about to say, I may have given House Shot Heroes game two a little bit too quickly. Mm -hmm. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. A little premature there. Well, we're being... Uh-oh. We've got some more equipment scratch, Coach. Sort of silliness going on. We'll figure that out eventually. What's old oh boy? All right, so what's going on here? Here. I told him that he could pull better than half of the scratch people for identity crisis, so I told him to sub out one of those guys. Mm. Sub out a scratch guy? Yeah, because he could pull better than half of the people.
people that are bowling on that team right now. Yep. See, she's she's being rude, but she's not. She's being rude, but she's not being wrong. There's a difference. Ooh. If you look at the numbers. So oh, Napier leaving the top there, potential 194 finish for Napier. However, another strike, and all of a sudden this game becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Hagen has to say. And, and no. no. Game is still sort of interesting, except it really would have been interesting if he got the strike because that would have forced Danny Coda to, to throw the first strike. Yeah. Now, if Shelfo goes out the door, he will have to throw the first strike. Napier finishes with the 194. Hagen finishes with 214. All right, Mr. Koo up. Lane 29, potential 269 finish. And he definitely finishes that shot nicely up in lane 29. And, and that's game. That's game game two. That, yes. first, strike, that first strike ends it. Yes. Anchors finish, finishers finish, and he is trying to finish them for game number two, which finish he already did. Finish them. Dun, 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 But he doesn't, now, wanna, he doesn't want to stop at just striking one time. No, he does not. Now I'm going to say, now the last time I did this, yep. I got yelled at uh -huh. from you okay. and from some other people. Uh, all right. It looks like... It looks like that Identity Crisis will take one game and only one game. Mm. And you know, I did the Shang Tsung. I don't drink on the job, thank you. I don't drink, period, actually, thank you. Straight edge. But I straight edge, sorry. GP Punk. It is I, GP Punk. GP Punk. Now, but one of the things that, I, that I've said was that it's almost sort of like Shang Tsung taking your soul. Mm -hmm. And then I made a noise that people sort of... Yeah, shout out to the soul snatchers out here. Yes. So I will not make the noise. And I will just... Maybe I'll make a different noise. Doink, 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 I'm taking the soul. Doink, 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 because I mean slurping sounds and people got offended by my slurping sounds. No, I've never so offended... I'm never sound. offended by them, especially on Saturdays. But... <laughs> But he definitely wasn't. He, he definitely wasn't offended right there by finally doubling. Um, potential 220 finish for him. I have more than enough text messages. I am not going there. <laughs> you know, and the one thing that's got to be in Shalafo's mind, you haven't thrown the ball bad this whole game, uh, but you were not rewarded. And this game, it, it, it gives and takes to everybody. You can throw it well, not carry. You can throw it horribly, and you can carry. And, or you can have the whole world in your hands. Yes, everything and nothing. That's the game of bowling. In the words of Cher, it could be all or nothing. It could be all or nothing. All right, uh, I'd say uh, it is right. But Michael, Michael Puzo's in. Michael Puzo. So we're going to see Michael Puzo come in. And based on what Identity Crisis is doing, I can understand why they're making this change from Brian Egan. Because Brian Egan right now shot around 70 pins under his average for the first two games. So can you explain to, um, to some of the viewers about the substitutions and, and, yes. and, and how that goes in terms of UBA? So in the UBA, you can make one and only one substitution per match. There is that match. Now, if this winds up in a tie and it goes into a roll-off situation, and trust me, it will not be going into a roll-off situation. Not today. Not today. Take my word for it. We will not be seeing a tie in a roll-off situation today. But you would have more opportunities to put in the subs. If there happens to be a tie situation in this match, something went horrifically wrong for House Shot Heroes. So right now we're going to go lane 31 and 32. Since you have been good luck for House Shot Heroes, why don't you give them give us their lineup? If we can yeah, call it right down, call it right down the middle. But uh, we're going to start with um, one of the first 300 stones today. Yeah. Uh, Ross Backstrom. We have B Bowler Adam Portrait, who has been create, helping, helping create that for House Shot Heroes. And we have Michael Morrissey, who shot 300 number two in game one. Yeah, however, that is also the only pair that has lost anything by identity crisis today. So this one may be a little bit more competitive. Bill, 
Beck is starting up for Identity Christ. The second bullet is Gino Benamino. That is the same person that almost shot the trade game two. And then we're finishing with James Bissett. Mm. Now, they won game two by, I want to get to see if my math is right, 36 pins. So now they're only trailing the wood <laughs> by around 160 pins. I'm going to go double check just to make sure what the overall wood is, uh, but it's not very good. So for my math here, they are down one. Pass out here is just up 112 on the scratch. They are up many on Joey. handicap number one and many and many again on handicap number two. So, major, major hypothetical question. What would have to happen for any potential of a roll-off? Have you ever seen, did you see the Ghostbusters movie yesterday? Did not. You need Slimer coming in uh -huh. and basically liquefying House Shot Heroes bowling equipment. Uh -huh. You may need the big baddie, I think he's, he's pronouncing it Baraka or Baraga. Uh -huh. Taking the bowling balls and shattering it with his little icicles. Mm. You may need one of those photon creatures to come through and really mess up the oil wow. on the lane. And maybe you need the fire chief to come set some of the lanes on fire, or maybe some of the bowlers on fire. And even if all that happens, I still don't think that would be good enough. And again, no disrespect to identity crisis. But you know what? Some days you are the dog, and other days you happen to be the hydrant. There's a fire hydrant right now on least 29 and 30. After all this broadcasting, do yes. they get like tips after because they suck so bad today? Well, you are a former Cruiserweight champion. After? You can give them some Mike lessons. Man. Listen, former, former champion. There's a reason why I'm back here calling it. This is the UBA, by the way. This is not the League of Churches. And not just some days, all day. All day. Yeah. And speaking of all day, they have been striking all day over here on Half the House Shot Heroes. Um, even though we are not over here on the on the middle pair, Michael Puzo um, seems like him, that would have been a, probably a, a good selection a little earlier on. Well, wait a minute, but right now, let's focus on lanes 31 to 32. This is game three. There's a little grinder if, over here. If you just joined us, it has been all, and I mean all, house shot heroes. And that was all carry right there. Identity Crisis needs to get something on the board because right now they got two points and that's it. And they're not winning the wood. You don't have to, I don't have to tell you what the wood is right now. I'm going to go get the numericals, but I'll just say this. They're not winning the wood. Well, wow. uh, needless to say, the wood might be looking like some people's series. They're not winning. The wood right now is better than a bunch of people's series. Hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna let you chat. I'm gonna go get the overall wood and get this verified. Well, all, all you. Let's right. chat I about shot least 21 to 32. Like last night. Would that happen to be anywhere close to the wood right now? I think so, actually. Oh man. I, I think the wood may be higher than your series. Okay. I'll be right back to get the officials. All right. Well. All in all, even though we are talking about the deficit and identity crisis taking a hit, all I can say is this, that when, when a team happens to take a hit, I basically will feel bad for whoever is bowling me next because I will take out all of that aggression on them. And identity crisis, they've been here before. They are a playoff team. Let's not take that away from them. They are, they're no slouches. So with that being said, Identity crisis. No matter what, they're going to go down swinging. They're going to have some respect for themselves, and they are going to. They're going to throw. They're going to throw it. They're going to throw it until the lights go off, and the lights are still on. And right now, the lights are on lane 32, and they're not going to convert that spare wood. Would have been good, but not for nothing. They have enough wood to out for for, for any potential uh, heater that will go out because they're they're staying hot. They got enough wood for the fire. Up on lane 31. Well, yeah, up on lane 31 is going to be on Hop Shot Heroes, but on lane 32, member of Identity Crisis right here, we have Bill Beck. Bill Beck up. Bill Beck with three in a row. And like I said, they are throwing punches no matter what. They're going to go down in a blaze of glory. And that's, but at the same time right there, Adam Portrait, saying screw your story and he's continuing to throw strikes but bill beck is leading off front, front, front three gino benamino 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 
Ben Amino almost at the 300. Yeah, Ben has been, been knocking down 10 each shot. And well, I'll, Identity Crisis needs to do something to salvage yeah. because if they don't, your 625 series is in, is in danger of being surpassed. Oh, Lord. The wood right now, it, oh, and, and now that we just said that, we've got crabs, possibly seven out paid the don't slides away from Ben Mino. Mm. And very tough to convert that, especially when the four pin and the six pin are of the same level. Or is he looking to take advantage? He does. Yeah. By the way, overall wood, 503 pins. And if... Um, anybody, so five on three after yeah, two. Yeah, after two. It's pretty good in, t in terms of any sort of series that you have. Yeah. And if you're just joining us, no, five, you're, you're not winning the one. Well, I was just saying um, before that identity crisis, and not to credit anything away from them. They are a playoff team. They've been here before. Oh, they're going to make the playoffs. And they're going to make the playoffs. They are a playoff. They're playoff players. They're still top guys and gals. They're, they're going to make the playoffs. The problem is game one, nothing you can do about that from house shot. Here, let's get shot two 300s, a 268 and 270. Yeah. Your bigger problem is game two because house shot here shot a 682 scratch, which they won. Uh -huh. And a 619 scratch, which they won. Oh. If you cannot beat the 619 scratch, even if you're on handicap, then yeah. that's trouble. They did win on the third pair, and they are starting to strike over here in game three and making this one a match. But again, you not only have to win, you've got to win by two, by averaging around 170 pins and change in all three matches. Yeah, and you know, I, I, I think identity crash is going to go down swinging. You know, and that, and Joe gonna... Borhill is giving me the look up. They're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. I mean, but they, they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna have some respect for themselves. They're gonna, they're gonna throw some punches back. But if, if, if I'm, if I'm Mob Nation, I got two things, and they always say this about a fighter: you either see your own blood and you panic, or you get enraged. Are they gonna get enraged when they go against Mob Nation? Are they gonna see their own blood? Meanwhile, while you do that, I'm going to go down and, and take a peek to yeah. see what Mop Nation's yeah, doing yeah, right yeah. now. I'm going to go, so I'll be back in a minute or Well, so. as, as, as Gordon goes to join the nation, <laughs> we are going to stay here on lanes 31 and 32. Listen, all I can say is Mop Nation's one of the best in this division, right? They got some of the purest talent that New England brings. Mop Nation's a so fantastic So they're not beating team. us. They got to fight ahead of them with those boys. Yes, they do. But fighters will fight. And right now, Bill Beck um, having a conversation. Hopefully, it's a good one with the 10 pin up on lane 31. And it looks like, um, yep, conversation continues. And it was a good one. Converts his 10 pin. Bill Beck staying clean. One blemish so far on the score of Benamino. Backstrom looking to convert. Converts the four pin. No problem on lane 32. For those watching, this is Saturday, April 13th. I have a voice of choice on that face, and we are viewing right here Identity Crisis versus the House Shot Heroes. They have definitely don't own the capes. And they have been flying through Identity Crisis, unfortunately, to stay for them. And Benamino flies through the pins, almost leaves the 4 9, 4 mercifully drops. Up on the middle right there, Adam Portrait. Oh, there it goes. So, telling him he's not alone. Also leaves a nine pin. That identity crisis trying to salvage whatever points they can at this point. Needless to say, House Shot Heroes laid a, a, a great foundation in the first one. Starting off leading by 435. They, they added on. They added on a, a, a couple more pins to that. 500 or so deficit in terms of the wood. Looking to fight back. Fighting from the bottom is never easy, especially when it seems like their, knuck their knuckles aren't hurting and their arms are not getting tired. They're, but identity crisis, they definitely have a chance to make up for whatever happens in this match against Mop Nation Militia. They need to really show up against them. Borhill did make mention that Mop Nation is one of the deepest uh, talent, talent pools in this division, maybe of any division in the UVA. And if they're having trouble, and this is a quote, if they are having trouble putting up any kind of fight against house shot heroes, then he, he, he shut us to think what will happen when they go against Mop Nation Melissa. But like I said, everybody has a plan. 
until they get hit in the mouth. And Identity Crisis may be doing their push-ups, doing their squats, and ready to really do some damage. They need to do damage, and they are certainly capable. Any team can win, any team can lose. Anyone can put the beats on, and anyone can get beat. Let's see if Backstrom on lane 31 can put the beats on the lanes right here. Frame five, and wow, um, nowhere near the pocket on there. Leaving a very interesting lead right there. Looking like a one, a one three eight. Bill Beck up. And Bill Beck uh, clearing the rack off there. Potential 279 finish for Bill Beck. And Backstrom not converting the 138 there. Very tough to make. Honestly, it's tough to lead. Let's see if the grinder himself, Mr. Benamino, Gino himself. Let's see if GB can strike right here in frame five, lane 32. We're going to take a little look over a scratch. Okay, right, right now, by the way, before you go into a scratch yes. completely. So, 8-4, Mob Nation, they uh -huh. have the whip by 303 pins. And they're, they're slacking because... Yeah. Because yeah. pins. Because pins. So our cameraman wanted to put a scratch because someone had the front four, and then immediately we see a 10 pin. Great, Anthony. Is that to call me the dark cloud? Really? At least I was there when we had just out of pair 300s. Got it, the Hester will make the spare. Well, um, talking about what's happening over here in Scratch. So, either way, Scratch pair of House Shot Heroes did a phenomenal job in the first two games. It seems like Identity Crisis is finally waking up and trying to throw some punches. Maybe too little, too late. Only thing they can do is just salvage some points before they go into their match well, they, they, with they need, Yeah, they need to salvage something because this so far, ugly. This is ugly for ugly. Hanson has been frustrated all day. Um, he started out throwing a good ball in game one, but ever since then, the transition has really been getting to him. Keep, he, yeah. Keep in mind, Identity Crisis is not a bad team. No, they are not. I was they, just they, alluding to They are not a bad team. Again, they just, they got flown out of the building yeah. game one, and then they did, certainly didn't recover game two. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're bleeding right now, and everybody reacts differently to the, to the, to the side of their own blood. You, you all have a plan until you get punched in the face. You know what? And that's two times that was said, because when Gordon walked away, I said that. I quoted, we both quoted uh, a Brooklyn Knight, Mike Tyson. Yes. And, if, and, 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 and if he, hopefully he watches both. I hope he does. Right now he's been watching a little bit of uh, mixed martial arts. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully he can make Paul fall, but that's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Right now we're looking at how <laughs> heroes starting to take control on the scratch side. Mm -hmm. And as we said before, any thought of Identity Crisis getting anything more than games, and not what means that they've got to start being aggressive and start taking leads. Yeah. That is clearly not happening on the scratch side, and it is definitely not happening on the handicap side. They have a little bit of an edge on that last pair, which when it, hopefully when the camera guy gets back, we're going to focus on a little bit. Yeah. But again, all day today, all house shot heroes, and there's another one by Borhill yeah. on the scratch side. But going over in the handicap, going over here on the scratch side, hammer time. Hammer, yeah, hammer time took a little break from construction. Uh, well, I think he's trying to get back on the job. He, he definitely did, did what he's supposed to do in game one and game two. Now, I want to speak a, bit, a little bit about um, uh, the unique nature here in uh, New England Northeast. And I, I was conversing with you about this before. Um, this is the only yes. only division where they have double headers. Correct. They go back to back double headers. Yes, they do. Because again, you look at it, this is a whole new, new England North. Yes. So you have teams from different states that are coming down. So to make life easier, mm -hmm. you have double headers. Now, I've heard that this may be a future thing going on in different regions uh -huh. that don't, that don't have that issue that have or that have that issue where your bowlers all over the place. I'm also hearing there is going to be some expansion 
with split ups in different conferences. That's going to be exciting to me. Yes. And I'm only questioning because I know that there's been a couple matches that we've been doing in Texas. Okay. When do you go to Texas? I would love to go to Texas. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? I definitely would. It'd be a little bit further than a road trip. This time we'd have to take a plane. And I, and I know we, they would definitely love that in, in the Metro North. Um, <laughs> And, uh, we haven't had a lot of uh, cameras well, we up try, here. Well, we try to go down to the Metro North, and, and the internet just went yeah, right there. So we're going to try to do that again. Well, I'll give a, a quick shout-out to them. Shout-out to teams such as uh, City Morgue and, and, and even Control Chaos, who um, surprisingly is holding first right now in that division. However, you guys like Class X get right back into this mix of things. Yeah. And I'll say this right now. There is no team more dangerous than Class X in the Metro. Well, and when I'm looking at Bill Beck giving, yeah. get, saying the church is going to come one day early. Yeah, giving a high five there. And speaking of teams that are very dangerous, House Shot Heroes definitely making that claim for a potential, I believe you said, breakout team of the year. Okay. Rookies of the year. Rookies of the year, absolutely. Without question, rookies of the year. Uh, would they be the Krakens of a player? I don't know. We'll have to see. I want to see that matchup, don't you? <laughs> shout out. What up, what up Justin? Justin shout, Conley. Shout out to Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, so another shout out that we could be having right now is Portrait, who is trying to get his face familiarized. Oh, very good. Strike right there. House Shot Hero is sort of sleeping in the first half of game three. All of a sudden, six strikes in a row, looking to try to take this game. Obviously, if you win the game, you'll solidify the wood. Well, let's see what the grinder over here can do. Gino, Gino B, GB. Benamino coming up here, that ball looks good. Yeah. Almost shot the 300. Yeah, Gino be striking. He uh, had 279 game two. You have to be angry, but set can go off for 290. So again, it's not like I am not putting up bad no. numbers. They're putting up good numbers. House Shot Heroes has just come out to play. Yeah. And they're not making the same mistakes that Identity Crisis has been making when they're not doing strikes. They've been leaving, for the most part, they've been leaving multiple spares and they've been filling them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, out of respect for both teams, you know, both teams are dogs. Just on this particular day, one dog was bigger than the other. Go. Set right now. That's six in a row for him. Yes, it is. Right there. And he definitely carries that. Good. Um, James Bissett. Identity Crisis right now up by 15. However, with a strike from Michael Morrissey, and keep in mind, he's already shot a 300 early on today. Yeah. That lead will swing over to half shot heroes if Morsi throws a strike here. What the hell? Oh, I mean, the, the word of the day is fronts. Now, now as we cover this pair, the middle pair, we got we got fronts up. Ooh, nine pin. <laughs> and we got nine pin right here for, Mor for Mr. Morrissey. Morrissey does not strike a spare and it'll be under 10 pin game as we go to the eighth frame. Yeah, Anthony has been doing a lot of hard work. Shout out to Anthony Nieves. Yes. Who's jumping back and forth and back and forth. It was supposed to be easy focusing on one pair per game, except you got 300s going on all over the place. Yes, it is. And so then we got to change over here and then change over there. It's raining trains out here. It it's is. raining trains. Oh, it's definitely, Hallelujah, definitely, it's yeah. raining trains. Yeah, yeah, trade beats out here. Uh, yeah. Trade day. A spare for Morrissey, however, another strike from Backstrom. And if we don't see at least a mark from Bill Beck coming coming up, now Sean Harris will take the lead in game three. All right. Yeah, uh, portrait right there. Uh, no facial recognition on the strike. Matter of fact, he has to double tap. He has to, he already tapped the pins one time, and he has to tap the 10 pin itself another time. Let's see what Portrait, Mr. Beck. AKA Adrian's daddy is coming up to make a spare. Beck's ball has to check. And oh, oh, there we go. There it is. Back with the strike, and Emiano up next. <laughs> Pusher makes a spare. Ooh. And all of a sudden, because of the three in a row from Backstrom, Benemiano's got to throw a strike here in order to maintain or to build a lead. Grinder, he's up, looking for four in a row. What's going on with Gino B over here? Benamino up. Benamino, nice roll. Gets under that ball really, really nice. Gets real good down on that shot. Put it up for Benamino. Oh. 
corner of Seymour on lane 32. On the lane next door, David Napier, who shot a 278 game one, by the way, said, you know what? That 300 thing sounds so yeah. groovy. You don't mind can, if can I, I join. Can he get on that? He's trying to get on that. Now, I'm going to try to get another 270 plus game he, going on. He wants to come to the party. It's 300 barbecue. Goes out the door for 300. If Bissett, who's up now, goes out the door, it's only a 290. Sure. <laughs> only a 290. 290 wouldn't even be the top two. Mm -hmm. And if Napier goes out, it wouldn't even be top three. Well, you know what? Isn't that something? Oh! That ball looks good. Ooh, is that oh, Napier? Is that, is that Napier? Napier. 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 Front eight. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee, oui, monsieur. Wee oui. wee. Oui, wee oui. wee. Oh. Identity crisis holding on to a 25 pin lead. Backstrom looking to cut it down. He does. Ooh, pick it, pick it. DJ Backstrom with the mix. D with the mix, four in a row. By the way, even yes. though this is the end of game one, uh -huh. hang out here on Caffeine TV because we got game two coming up on our oh, double Oh man, double dose of caffeine, double shot. Uh, and this is going to be fun because we're going to see Mob Nation Militia, uh -huh. who was in the Elite Eight last year at Battle Bowl. Yeah, M&Ms who certainly are not sweet. And if, it's, if the bag is yellow, they are going to certainly go nuts. That is true. Portrait picks up where yes. he left off. There's a strike looking at... Yeah, Portrait with a picture-perfect strike. Mercy looking to double, and they can put some pressure on identity crisis. Bissett, yeah, he can go out the door for 290. They may force him to go out the door for 290. Yep. Especially if Benamino doesn't produce here. Benamino looking for five I say yes, he does. And he does. Uh -huh. Sean Knight is correct. I know a strike when I see one, especially when I can't really throw them like I used to. <laughs> oh, my God. That's it. Retirement home for you. <laughs> Can we talk about the sub out later on, man? The sub out, I feel, should have happened earlier. Well, the problem is they needed to sub out House Shot Hero oh, team because yeah. they're on oh. fire. And now that's that being said, no 300 this round. Ten, I was going to ask Tony to go back over to 39 and 30. I no longer need to do that. 10 pin. So back over to 31 and 32. And man of the hour right now is the set. He can go mm -hmm. off for 290. And as yes, I said can. momentarily, if he doesn't, they're going to be trailing. So this has got to be striking. And that's going to hurry. And, and that's not out. a well-thrown ball. 3-5. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's 2-5. Yeah, and, uh, and as you alluded to that, definitely got under it, but he missed his target inside where there is still oil. And when the oil is erratic, it creates static for your shot. And it's skated down a little bit of that 60 action that we talked about, 60 feet. It does. And here's how good House Shot Heroes has been. Uh -huh. We have a 290 up here. Uh -huh. And if he misses this, they lose the lead, going into the 10th frame. Uh, yeah. They're that damn good. The set looks to make the spare. That ball's got to hold on, oh. and it doesn't. That ball did not look good either, and all of a sudden, yeah. Identity Crisis, who was in control of this game and maybe starting to Most spearhead a comeback, a <laughs> and not only do we have a match, right right now it's House Shot Heroes that could be in control of this match. Ten pin, and all of a sudden, yeah, Bill a strike from Backstrom. Yeah. Actually, if they go out the door, House Shot Heroes is going to be in control of game three, going down the wire, starting with Beckstrom going up, he gets it. Five in a row for Beckstrom, and all of a sudden, House Shot Heroes is looking to take control again. Yeah, the heroes got something to say. I mean, they're obviously, they're not taking lead game one. Handicap, they're up by around 25, even though that's still close. Scratch is still close, but right now they're up. This could be, if they win all three, this could be 38 to two? Well, it, it, it's not gonna be a 40 piece. It will not be a 40 it's, piece. Uh, you know, and there's solace in that. And you can also make the, you can also make the argument that they can't do any worse against Mott Nation Militia. There's only one way that they can do worse. And I don't think that way is going to happen. I don't think that way is, I don't think that way is going to happen. We've uh, never had that on Caffeine TV. And, and, we have not had the 40 piece yet. And not to focus on myself, but speaking as a bowler who has more heart than brains at times, for those who know me, when 
the run backs are always a different situation. And the solace is that they have a run back uh, against a team that's tougher. And that's when you get full of, dare I say, piss and vinegar, and then you kind of wake up and you go on adrenaline. When the adrenaline kicks in, it always switches the story, and you switch the plan. <laughs> the plan they, is they to not to lose the like this twice. That's the plan. <laughs> Well, now that I said possible 38 to 2, we have, a, have an open for Borhill. And if Brian Eaton goes out the door, they have a match going into the middle of Paraguay in the 10th frame. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep you posted over there. However, back on 31 and 32. Pass shot heroes up by 20. They need Benamino to keep him in this one. Now, even though we're not focusing on that, I just want to make, want to make a point of something strategically from a strategic, strategic standpoint. My it's a strategy. Strategy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're striking so much, I can't even talk right. As portrait, their um, strikes for their lane 32. From a strategic standpoint, for identity crisis, you have yourself, Michael Puzo, who, came, who comes in shoots significantly higher than the person that you subbed them in for. I say that is a... a a great idea for your next match against one of the toughest teams in all of UBA. We'll see they that. might However, want to look at the back, numbers. Let's go back over here. We'll get to that point later. Let's finish out this match. Yeah, and Porsche wants to finish and, out a step frame. Absolutely, and right now Identity Crisis is in deep trouble on that third pair, especially if we get another bet. That's three in a row at the most opportune time for Hot Shot Heroes. Yeah. Looks like they my were best down by 20. They are now up by around 30. And if Benamino does not make the spare for this game's oh. gonna be over, and uh oh is right. He completely whiffs, and yeah. that's gonna be game set match over the third spare. So I'm going to plead with our cameraman to go over to the one match that right now is remotely interesting, which is 29 and 30. We'll see if Scratch is remotely interesting momentarily. Strike out here, 279, and we'll get it. Yeah. I'm sorry, no, we won't. 277 deep here. Which is the fourth best of the day. Slap. <laughs> the fourth best of the day. No good. So there's, there is potential for not being on lane 29 and 30 for Identity Crisis to pull this one out, right? There's a shot for Identity Crisis to get into the game, which will double the number of games that they currently have right now. Scratch is also a possibility on the Scratch side as well. But we're going to finish off the handicap side on 29 and 30, and then we'll go over scratch. Okay. okay. And they had a shot. However, 10 pin is lurk. This is still a close game. If he makes the spare, then throws a strike to one pin game. Our shot here is big shot by Gonzalez. Oh, and over here on lane 31 right there. We have a double, and right now, shaking his head because he already knows he needed to go 290 well, he, for he, to have a shot. Yeah, well, he needed uh, Benamino to not go 7-1 in the 10th frame. Yeah, he needed that. Benamino struck out. They can actually win that. They will not. <laughs> As we still take a look on lane 31, 32, um, House Shot Heroes will take that game. Uh, we have... House Shot Heroes is going to take... Yeah, that's the only game that they've lost right now. So right yeah. now they're going to go eight. So they go eight and two over there. Middle pair of games still in doubt. Yeah. And the scratch, not only is the game's in doubt, none of the wood are, is in doubt. That's all going to House Shot Heroes. So Identity Crisis is actually up by two pins as mm -hmm. we go into the 10th frame. I see Morrissey looking to finish out. That'll be 223. Uh, yeah, 223. 223 for Morrissey crew right now looking to throw. All right, well, Identity Crisis will get four points. Assuming, well, I shouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. Lots we, of crazy we know things how to spell assume. He is yikes. House on Heroes is 34, Identity Crisis 6. So we're going to be back for the second half of the double hitter. For now, for Sean Knight, this is Gordon Pepper signing off. UBA all day. All day.